My favorite memory of Chennai as a child would be the beach. Playing in the big, big waves. in my grandparents' house. Yeah, those are some of my favorite memories. So I was actually abused. I don't remember exactly when it started, but the most of it happened from the time I was 10 till I was 13. It was numerous times, it was day, night. And as a child, I had no idea that this had a name. I thought I was evil, I thought I was bad. Um, I somehow made this happen to myself. But at the same time, I also realized that there was something dirty about it. Um, I also thought if I resisted, other people in my family would suffer the consequences. I, I didn't know that I wasn't alone in, in the world undergoing sexual abuse. When I finally, you know, said no, um, I finally thought I could say no. And my abuser just looked at me and said, oh, if you don't want it, I won't do it. It shocked me. I was like, oh my God, I could have made this stop. And so I felt guilty. I became suicidal through my teen years. But it's only later I realized he was just messing with my mind because I, I was 13. I had reached sexual maturity. He had lost interest in me. He had started abusing another cousin of mine. It was his final hurt, his final thrust, his final degradation of me as a person was that comment. It took a long time. It, it took a very long time. Guilt is one thing that it took me a very long time to get over. Uh, the first person in the family that I talked about was actually the daughter of the perpetrator. Um, she and I were very close. We basically grew up as sisters and that's how the perpetrator was able to have access to me because I was sent to stay with her quite often. And we were watching TV and a program on childhood sexual abuse came on and she said, oh, this doesn't happen in India. And then I said, I know it happens because it happened to me. And she stopped dead and she looked at me and she said, it was my father, wasn't it? Yeah, so it, it's been a growing process. So one is the realization that I wasn't alone. Second was the realization is I'm not responsible. And then in my late 20s, a very strong desire to protect my nieces from the same, same thing. So we told other family members. There was, a, there was resistance. It's a, it's a difficult subject to talk about. And at that point, I told myself, I've given the responsibility of protecting other children to my family. Let them take that responsibility. I've undergone the trauma. It's now their responsibility to protect other children. And in a way, I walked away from it. Around the early 2013, 2014, I started to get a gut feeling that the person who abused me may not have stopped yet. My thinking got even deeper. How do I now make repeat offenders like that stop? And my realization is, repeat child molesters don't stop. Society has to make them stop. 
So I went and talked to the Canadian police about it, and they said, if this had been in Canada, we'll treat you exactly like that. So they took my statement, they did all the interviews, but of course Canada has no jurisdiction. The crime happened in India. I was an Indian at that time. The perpetrator's an Indian. So I came in 2016 and tried to launch a case, and that's when I realized the laws in India do not permit latter-day reporting. In 2012, we got POXO, and in POXO, they're not clear. There's no clear prohibition from an adult reporting, but there's no clear instruction that an adult can report to. And so I decided to launch the campaign in, in change.org. met with Ms. Menakar Gandhi and she understands that there's a gap in the legislation and she's willing to throw her support. Uh, Ms. Khani Muli, MP Ms. Khani Muli came with me. We approached the minister to make some amendments in the uh, act so that victims uh, who've been affected uh, many years ago can still complain. It's almost educating society which then, you know, brings political will which then brings training to the police and the judiciary. And hopefully, we'll make the stop for the children of the future.